hello dear students welcome to the third lecture of unit 5 which is on multiplexing and multiple accesses in the last lecture we have discussed about the frequency division multiplexing and wavelength division multiplexing in this lecture we shall discuss on the synchronous time division multiplexing and statistical time division multiplexing time division multiplexing is a digital multiplexing technique for combining several low rate digital channels into one high rate so you can have number of input channels whose rate is low and you can combine these low rate channels with the help of a multiplexer and you can get a single high rate channel so here four inputs are there and the multiplexer is going to combine these four inputs such that the channel corresponds to the input 1 for some time input 2 for another slot of time input 3 for the next slot of the time and input 4 for the last slot of the time so the output channel is divided into time slots and each input gets one slot of those particular time slots at the demultiplexer the <coughs> time slots are different time slots are read by the demultiplexer and they are converted into the different outputs so during the first slot it is the input from uh, the first channel so it is separated in the second slot it is the input from the second channel so it goes to the second as a second output in the third slot the input is from the third channel so it goes to the third output and in the fourth slot Uh, the input is from the fourth channel and it is given or it is separated as the fourth output and again back the first slot in the next frame so this uh data which is on this particular channel it is in the form of frames in case of the time division multiplexing so in the synchronous time division multiplexing the data rate of the link is n times faster and the unit duration is n time shorter meaning we are having let us say three inputs and their data rates uh you can you can say that uh, a1 uh, is the first uh, group of uh, bits in the channel 1 a2 is the second group of bits and a3 is the next group of bits over a duration t likewise in the second input channel it is b1 b2 and b3 
and the duration is again t the third channel also has uh, c1 c2 and c3 uh, number of uh, uh, these bits which are uh, generated over the duration of t now what this multiplexer does is that it combines this group of bits from each of the channel and the output channel has the number of frames like in the first frame uh, it combines the a1 b1 and c1 the duration of this particular output channel is such that in the time t it sends a1 b1 and c1 so the data rate of this particular output channel is three times that of the data rate of the input channel so the input channel has a1 number of bits or b1 bits and c1 bits during the time t whereas uh, these particular a1 b1 and c1 are sent out uh, during the time t that is the bits which are received over time t a1 block is sent on the output channel only in t by 3 time so like that the b1 block bits are sent in t by 3 time and c1 block bits are sent again in t by 3 time so combinedly the a1 b1 and c1 are sent <coughs> in the time t and they are received at the input for the duration t and they are sent in the time t so the data rate of the output channel is three times it is three times uh, higher than the data rates of each of the inputs <coughs> let us see one example based on this uh, in the figure below, the data rate for each input connection is 3 kilobits per second. If one bit at a time is multiplexed, uh, so the unit is one bit, uh, what is the duration of each input slot, each output slot and each frame? So here the given part is the data rate of each input connection is 1 kilobits per second. This means that the bit duration is 1 divided by 1000 seconds or 1 millisecond. The duration of the input slot is 1 millisecond. Uh, so the data is received at each of these uh, inputs uh, at the rate of 1 kilobytes per second that means uh, the duration of one bit is 1 millisecond the duration of the output bit is to be calculated now here we can see that the a1 block uh, which comes which arrives at uh, the input 1 uh, during the time t so that particular these particular bits are sent on the output channel only during during the uh, t by 3 so if we consider uh, that one bit uh, time here is 1 millisecond then here 
that single bit uh, will have a duration which is one third uh, at the output. So the duration of each output time slot is one third of the input time slot. So this means that the duration of the output slot is one by three millisecond. Each frame carries three output uh, time slots. So the duration of a frame is three into one by three milliseconds or one millisecond. The duration of the frame uh, is same as that of the duration of an input unit. Okay. So <clears throat> that is the that was the example one. Now let us look at the example two. So in this example, <clears throat> it is required uh, to find out again the input bit duration, the output du bit duration, and the output bit rate and the output frame rate. So here the input uh, <coughs> is given. The input sp speed is 1 megabits per second. So here you can calculate easily the uh, input bit duration. So the input bit duration here would be 1 divided by 1 megabits per second that is 1 microsecond. Then the output bit duration uh, will be 1 fourth that of the input bit duration because there are 4 uh, channels. So it will be 1 by 4 microsecond. The next uh, we want to calculate is the output bit rate. Uh, so or rather we want to uh, calculate uh, the <coughs> duration of one frame so uh, or it is the uh, output bit rate is uh, required to be calculated so the output bit rate it will be uh, 4 into so output bit rate we can calculate as uh, it is the 4 times the input rate because there are 4 channels so here the output bit rate it will 4 into 1 megabits per second that is 4 megabits per second then the fourth uh, quantity that we want to calculate in this it is the the fourth quantity that is calculated is the output frame rate and output frame rate so the frame rate is always the same as that of the input rate so the frame rate is uh, 1 lakh frames per second because we are sending 4 bits in each frame we can verify the result of previous question by multiplying the frame rate by the number of bits per frame. Okay, so having seen this example, now let us see how actually this uh, multiplexing and demultiplexing can be implemented. Uh, here it is implemented using so called interleaving. There are two switches in this. So TDM can be visualized as two fast rotating switches. So this is one switch at the multiplexer side and uh, this is another switch at the demultiplexer side. The switches are synchronized and rotate at the same speed but in opposite direction. Okay, so 
as this switch uh, goes to the next position so simultaneously this switch also goes to the next position so right now uh, the switch position is such that the first input channel uh, is connected to this particular multiplexer switch so you can see that uh, it is it is connected you can say uh, and uh, here <coughs> it will go as the first output okay now <coughs> when this particular switch rotates it rotates anti clockwise so when it connects to the second input then uh, here this particular switch will connect clockwise will rotate clockwise and it will connect to the second output so you can see that uh, whatever you are sending at input 1 will be received at output 1 whatever you are sending at uh, input 2 so that is the blocks b1 b2 b3 so they will be always received by this output 2 that is b1 b2 and b3 like that okay so these switches they are synchronized with each other and they rotate in the opposite direction so this particular process it is called interleaving now you can uh, see that when we are dealing with this synchronous uh, uh, time division multiplexing then uh, you must always have data all the time at the input but what will happen if some channel is not having any data or some channel is not having sufficient data all the time so in that case uh, how will be the output so here you can see that in the first frame the first uh, input is always having the data so here uh, the in the first slot uh, you have this particular frame coming from the first channel then there is no data there is no frame at the second channel and you can see that the second slot uh, in this particular frame is empty then you have the data in for at the third channel and fourth channel and this particular data block will be will be stored in the appropriate slot in the first frame so this is about the first frame then in the second frame you can see that the channel 1 is having the data so the channel 1 slot will be occupied but channel 2 and channel 3 are not having uh, the data so these slots are empty and finally this particular fourth channel is again having the data so uh, this particular a slot is occupied so <clears throat> like this you can see that whenever the inputs uh, are having the data the appropriate slots are filled and when the inputs are not having any data then that particular slot goes empty so here you can see that the output channel is not effectively used so the effi efficiency of this particular uh, synchronous time division multiplexing uh, will be poor or will be less so uh, this particular problem can be solved uh, in the next type of uh, uh, time division multiplexing that is the statistical uh, time division multiplexing so that we shall see <coughs> later.
then the <coughs> multi level multiplexing that can be used in this particular synchronous uh, uh, multiplexing uh, here this is to solve the problem of the input uh, channels which have the different data rates okay particularly the <coughs> data rates are uh, like this there are three channels with 40 kbps uh, speed and there are two channels uh, with 20 kbps input speed so what is done is that using uh, one multiplexer this 20 kilobits per uh, channels two channels they are combined with a multiplexer so that the output <coughs> data rate uh, becomes 40 kilobits per second so that for this particular multiplexer now all the channels they have the data rate of 40 kilobits per second and that results into uh, the output channel having the data rate of 160 kilobits per second so always the output uh, channel has the data rate which is the number of channels multiplied by the data rate of each of the input channel and all the input channel should have the same data rate so though here these two channels were not having same data rate uh, they are combined together and they are uh, the data is sent to a through a single channel in this case so this particular uh, technique uh, is called multi level multiplexing the another situation uh, is like this uh, we are having uh, most of the channels which are 25 kilobits per second but there is one channel uh, having 50 kilobits per second so here what is done is that uh, these 50 kilobits per second uh, is divided into two different channels or you can say that two channels uh, two input channels of the multiplexer are given to a single channel so multiple slots are given to a single channel you can see here that these two slots they are given to the first channel only and uh, the remaining uh, channels they get uh, one slot in each so the resultant uh, data rate here you can say that it is 25 kilobits per second into there are five inputs so effectively it will be 125 kilobits per second so like this uh, <coughs> if some channel is having uh, the data rate which is uh, integral multiple of the remaining uh, each of the channel then you can assign two or more number of uh, slots to a single input channel so this particular process uh, or this particular scheme it is called multiple slot multiplexing then uh, it may happen sometimes that the input channels may not have the frequency which is either half or double or some integer multiple uh, times of the uh, other frequencies for example here this is 46 kilobits per second whereas the others they are 50 kilobits per second so in this case what is done the solution is to make highest data rate dominant data rate and then add dummy bits to the input lines with lower data rates so here the highest data rate is 50 kilobits per second whereas the 46 kilobits per second uh, is the lower data rate so it is converted into 50 kilobits per second so how it is converted so 4 kilobits per second 
uh, are added uh, to this particular 46 kilobits per second so that it makes 50 kilobits per second so this 4 bit added it is uh, this particular technique adding of the additional bits dummy bits uh, is called pulse stuffing or bit padding or bit stuffing so that all input channels uh, will be now of same uh, data rate and they will be multiplexed and at the other end they will be demultiplexed and of course uh, whatever operation pearl stuffing that is the empty data bits which are added uh, they need to be removed at the demultiplexer uh, so having seen these various techniques now look at the framing synchronization in time division multiplexing it may happen that the demultiplexer and multiplexer if they are not properly synchronized then whatever bits we are sending at the uh, sender end may not be correctly received at the receiver end so for this purpose the multiplexer and demultiplexer uh, need to be synchronized this can be done by adding one or more bits uh, which are called synchronizing bits with each of the frame in the beginning so here we can see that there are three frames and in each of the frame there are uh, uh, slots for each of the input uh, channels and at the beginning of that uh, one bit is added okay so here the uh, <coughs> this particular uh, synchronizing bit here it is one here it is zero then for the frame three again it is one so you have some pattern framing synchronization pattern uh, and at the D multiplexer, so the D multiplexer is going to check for this particular uh, bits and if these bits are arrived in this particular sequence, then it confirms that the synchronization is there. Okay, so these bits are used for the purpose of <coughs> synchronization and it makes sure that whatever is being sent at the uh, sender uh, is being received correctly uh, the practical application of this time division multiplexing many telecom companies implement tdm uh, through a hierarchy of digital signals and this is called digital signal service or digital hierarchy we can see here that uh, 24 uh, channels are combined into into a line and this particular uh, line has the data rate of uh, 1.544 megabits per second whereas each of the input line has the data rate of 64 kilobits per second all these are the voice channels so that is in the telephone companies the uh, when the voice data is to be transmitted then each of the voice signal when you make up a telephone call then the data each connection generates uh, the data which is equal to 64 kilobits per second so like this 24 such voice channels they can be combined into a single channel using the multiplexer and with the tdm technique and that gives the output channel of 1.544 megabits per second so this particular line is called ds0 line then <coughs> four such ds0 lines uh, rather this is DS0 lines they are having the data rates of 64 kilobits per second whereas 
the output lines here that is DS1 so they have the data rates of 1.544 megabits per second so four such DS1 lines are combined by another multiplexer uh, to get an output uh, line or out output channel which has the data rate of 6.312 megabits per second so you can see this is approximately four times that of this particular data rate that is 1.544 megabits per second then again another level of multiplexing now each of these ds2 line has the data rate of 6.3 <clears throat> 1 2 megabits per second and uh, 7 such uh, lines they are combined together so that the the output of it will be having the frequency uh, as high as 44.376 megabits per second so this is the uh, ds3 line which combines 7 ds2 lines Whereas uh, the last one uh, multiplexer, it combines six such DS3 lines and uh, it has the data rate of 274.176 megabits per second. So here you can see that device uh, signals are being generated by each of the uh, telephone you can say and 24 such voice channels they are combined by the first multiplexer so that uh, you get you get the t1 line with the data rate of 1.544 megabits per second each voice signal generates a data rate of 64 bits per second and uh, Basically, this particular voice signal is analog signal and uh, it has the bandwidth of 4 kilohertz and we use the pulse code modulation. In the pulse code modulation, the sampling uh, happens at 8000 samples per second. That is, in one second, 8000 samples are taken and each sample has 8 bits. So in one second there will be 8000 into 8 bits that is 64 bits so the data gen is generated at the rate of 64000 bits per second and it is combined using this multiplexer so that uh, 24 such lines into 64 bits per second gives rise to a t1 line of 1.544 megabits per second so this is uh, another diagram showing how actually these uh, bits are uh, put into the frames uh, the data which is generated by each of the line is uh, is put into the frame uh, such that for each of the channel the one slot will be of 8 bits and after the all the slot one bit is added which is uh, the synchronizing bit so you can see that per frame there are 8 bit into 24 channels that is 24 into 8 and one bit which is the uh, you can say synchronizing bit so in one frame there are 193 bits and if we uh, consider uh, such 8000 frames which are which will be generated uh, in one second because there are 8000 samples per second so in one second there will be 8000 frames so that the number of bits generated in one second it will be 8000 multiplied by 193 so you can see that the 
effective data rate at the output it is 1.544 megabits per second so this is how uh, that t1 line has the data rate of 1.544 megabits per second uh, here are the e lines this particular european use a version of t lines called e lines and uh, uh, this e1 line has the data rate of 2.048 and there are 30 voice channels in it whereas e2 line has 8.448 megabits per second and uh, there are uh, 120 voice channels in it okay so uh, you can see that uh, e2 consist of four e1 uh, then e3 consist of uh, uh, again four uh, e2 and like likewise e4 is uh, again some multiple of the e3 okay so this is uh, what is used uh, in the european uh, companies now let us come to the statistical time division multiplexing uh, we just now discuss the synchronous time division multiplexing so in that each input has reserved slot in the output frame uh, this can be inefficient in some input lines when there is no data to send so in that case the synchronous time division multiplexing is inefficient in the statistical time division multiplexing slots are dynamically allocated to improve the bandwidth efficiency so only when an input has input line has slots worth of data to send uh, is given a slot in the output frame in the statistical multiplexing the number of slots in each frame is less than the number of input lines so if we compare the synchronous time division multiplexing and statistical tdm it goes like this so this we have already uh, discussed the synchronous time division multiplexing so in the output frame <coughs> the slots are reserved the first slot is always reserved for the line a or the channel a the second slot is always reserved for the second input the third slot is reserved for the third input you can see here that there is no third input and uh, even if it is not there so it in every frame it goes uh, uh, empty and <coughs> likewise so there are uh, five uh, chan input channels here and there are five slots uh, here this is the synchronizing bit okay and again this is the next frame so this is what is the synchronized uh, synchronous tdm uh, now this is the statistical tdm so you can see at the first frame here the first input uh, is ready a1 frame is ready so here a1 frame is uh, is put into the uh, into the uh, frame it is it is allocated and along with that its address is written that is this a1 frame it it belongs to the line a then b1 is also there so it reads the multiplexer reads the b1 and uh, uh, it is given uh, space in the first frame and its address its uh, address is written here that is the b now there is no c input so <coughs> it skips this then next is d1 is available so it puts uh, d1 here and uh, you can see that Uh, its address is written here so the first frame consists of uh, uh, three slots 
the first one from input A, second one from input B, and the third one from input D. Though there are five input channels at the input of the multiplexer, but at the output of the multiplexer in each of the frame there are only three slots. Okay. If you see the second frame, then <coughs> there is no uh, input after A1 frame at line uh, A. So <coughs> it will not find any slot here, but uh, B2 is there. So B2 frame is taken into the B2 block is taken into the second frame with its address B. Then uh, C input is not there, but uh, D2 input at on the D line is there. So uh, in the second frame, D2 is allocated and uh, its address is written here and uh, uh, E is there and now E will be given the space here. Okay. So this particular uh, addresses will be used by the demultiplexer so as to separate out this particular to know uh, from which particular input these bits are going to come because here it is not fixed that the first slot will always belong to the line 1 or second slot will always belong to line 2 uh, which is uh, which is there in the synchronous TDM. So in the statistical TDM the uh, slots are not reserved for any of the input. So that is why uh, whenever the blocks are put into the frames then along with that their address is written. So this is what is the statistical time division multiplexing. So in the statistical time division multiplexing the multiplexer as we have seen checks each block in a round robin fashion it allocates a slot for an input line if the line has data to send <coughs> otherwise it skip that line and check the next line so this is what happens so here the output channel is effectively used in case of the statistical time division multiplexing uh, so it is efficiently used so we have discussed uh, time division multiplexing in this particular lecture uh, the particularly the synchronous time division multiplexing and then the statistical time division multiplexing in the next lecture we shall see frequency hopping spread spectrum that is SHSS and direct sequence spread spectrum that is DHSS. So the spread spectrum will be the topic of the next lecture. Uh, this is uh, one assignment for you. So solve this particular assignment and uh, you can give your response, you can share your response or any questions uh, on my email ID or you can post it on the group. Uh, I suggest you to send it on the group which is for this particular uh, subject SEIT COA FCCN uh, and uh, after watching this lecture, do reply uh, that do confirm that you have watched this particular lecture. Uh, you can find the presentation material, the slides of this video lecture at the GitHub. Uh, thank you and see you in the next lecture. So, thank you very much.